I'm a believer in data-driven decisions, my friends, but I am starting to think that tracking median and average sales price in our local market is mostly useless bullshit. I'm gonna share with you the reasons why, and then I'm gonna tell you the three important stats that actually really, really matter in your home buying and selling decisions. It's market update time, my friends. Stick around, here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Heather Taylor, founder of Tailored Realty Group, where we create real estate experiences tailored to who? That's right, tailored to you. This month, as I started preparing my usual market update, I started looking at the average and median sales price, and I found myself getting really frustrated with the numbers. The bottom line is they just didn't make that much sense. And I started to think, does this information really help you guys? It's just not giving an accurate picture of the market in this area. So. What good is it? I mean, I can stand up here and drone on and on about numbers while your eyes glaze over in boredom, but I just don't think it's helping you that much. Here's what I mean. Take a look at this spreadsheet. I'll put it up on the screen. It, it would imply to you that the prices have changed month over month, 20% in some spaces, year over year, 25%, 21%, or at the other extreme, a decrease of 17% or a decrease of 30%. I mean, that is not what's happening. Why does the data seem so off? Well, when we compare median or average prices, the data can be skewed by a couple of really important factors. First of all, you're rarely comparing apples to apples. What I mean is the same house does not sell month over month or this year and then next year. So your data set can vary by things like location, age of home, size of the home. For example, say last month, a bunch of newer, larger homes sold and this month, a bunch of older, smaller homes sold. The median price would be lower, but that doesn't mean prices have dropped. It just means a different type of home sold in that time period. A second reason the data can be off is that the data set might be pretty small. Now, when we're just comparing towns, we don't always have a ton of homes that have sold in a particular area month over month. So you might not get a great uh, representation of the entire area. In fact, these median prices and average prices, they're really meant to be looked at in a wider area like the entire triangle over a longer period of time to kind of give you a trend line rather than a specific month over month number. So you might be wondering, what good does it do us to track median price at all then or average price? Well, it does give you an idea about pricing in a particular area. Like if I tell you the median price somewhere is 700,000, you know, there's an equal number of homes that sold under seven and as uh, sold over seven. And you kind of get an idea of the general pricing in that area. Just don't get too hung up on those numbers. If you want to know more specifically about what prices are like in a particular area or with a particular type of home that you're interested in, like new construction, resale, town home, single family home, just book a free consultation on my website and we can go over in more detail what you're looking for. So since the data is helpful in giving you a ballpark of what things are selling for in a particular area, I am going to show you all the median prices in Morrisville, Cary, Apex, Holly Springs, and Fuquay Barina, all separated out by type of home and the city that they're in on the spreadsheet on the screen and you can pause it and take a look at that. It at least gives you an idea of what you can expect to pay. Very ballpark, very generally in each area. So right about now you may be wondering, well, Heather, then what metrics would actually be helpful for me if I need to determine my buying or selling strategy? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. There are three things that I believe actually help you in determining how to structure an offer or how to prepare and price your house if you're a seller. The three metrics are months of supply, list to sales price, and within the list, of, list to sales price, uh, category is like how many sold over, under, and at list price. And then the final one is the days on market. So with that in mind, let's get down and dirty with these numbers. Let's take a look at these metrics for Morrisville, Cary, and Apex, and then Holly Springs and Fuquay Verena. I'm gonna use my handy dandy whiteboard here. Come on over whiteboard. We're gonna write these numbers down so you can actually see them. Okay, I'm actually right-handed, so let's move the board over here. Um, I got my handy dandy numbers right here. I don't have them memorized, my friends, but let's take a look. So starting with, let me not trip over this thing, months of supply in Morrisville, Cary, and Apex, we have 0.9 months of supply. In Holly Springs and Fuquay Marina, we have 1.3 months of supply. Now, as a reminder, months of supply, under four months is a seller's market, four to six months is a balanced market, and anything over six months of supply is considered a buyer's market. So taking a look at these numbers, we're still very much in a seller's market. Now, list to sales price in Morrisville, Cary, and Apex, we have 101.1, and in Holly Springs and Fuquay Verena, we're right at 100%. 
Let's draw a little percentage. Oh, that looks like 106. That's supposed to say 100, 100. You got it, right? Okay. So what does this mean? This means that houses are selling uh, in Holly Springs and Fuquay Verena generally at list price and in Morrisville, Cary, and Apex a little bit over. Again, reflecting a strong seller's market. Now, when we know these facts, it's nice to have a breakdown of how many, what percentage of all the sales are at, under, or over the list price. So let's take a look at that. The percentage of listings that sold under their list price in Morrisville, Cary, and Apex is 31%, and in Fuquay, Verena, 37%. The ones that sold at list price are 25% over here and 29% over here. And then how many sold over list price? 44% in Morrisville, Cary, and Apex sold over list price. And in Holly Springs and Fuquay, Verena, 34%. And then median days on market, how long are these things sitting on the market? Five days here and nine days over here. Now, this is all your March data. I realize it's already late April. I apologize for that. Next month, I will be uh, get this video out earlier in the month. But what is this data actually telling us? It's telling us is we are still very much in a seller's market. Now, it doesn't mean things are up and down 20 to 30 percent, right? It just means the market is hot and we are probably seeing prices increase at a pretty reasonable amount. Now, there are strategies you can use if you are selling your home to generate multiple offers. And there are strategies you can use if you are buying a home to either avoid multiple offer situations or to make sure your offer gets noticed and potentially accepted. If you want to discuss those further, please reach out to me, schedule a free consultation on my website, and we can go through all of those strategies. But it's good to know where we are in the market so that you can prepare yourself appropriately, whether you're on the buy or sell side. All right, so let's wrap this video up with a few, get out of my way, <laughs> a few of my personal thoughts on the state of the market. As you may have heard, um, analysts are now predicting that mortgage rates may not drop at all this year. In fact, they recently went up, which is not what anyone was expecting. Essentially, in, uh, it, <laughs> essentially, inflation has not slowed as much as the Fed would like just in case you wanna know what that is, the Fed wants to see it around 2% a year. We're still over that. So because of that, rates may not drop at all this year. Now, as we enter into the hottest part of the market, April, May, June, what's gonna happen with rates remaining high? Hard to say, but so far here, we haven't seen a slowdown in the housing market. Just make sure if you are gonna buy a house now, you are not counting on rates to go down. Things don't always go as planned in that way. A lot of people were thinking, oh, I'll just buy now and then rates will go down. Make sure you're comfortable with whatever rate you lock in at and that you're comfortable over the long term with that rate because things may or may not change and you may or may not be able to refinance and you don't want to stress yourself out financially. And before I go, speaking of mortgage interest rates, there are a number of strategies that you can actually use to decrease your interest rate. Um, I'm gonna do an entire video about that soon, but if you'd like to find out sooner about some of those strategies, please also reach out to me, how schedule a free consultation on my website. Okay, that's all I've got for you guys this month. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in this area, or really anywhere in the nation, I have a very, large network, I've been doing this a long time, of people across the country that can help you out if you're not looking in this area. Just book a free consultation on my website or reach out to me using one of these other contact methods on the screen here. That's all I've got for y'all this week. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. Bye.